and I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Bellingham City Council. My name is Roxanne Murphy. I'm the council president pro tem and I'm filling in for Pinky Vargas. She's our council president, but she's out sick this evening. So we'll start off with announcements and upcoming meetings. Oh, actually, excuse me. We will start off with roll call. <laughs> Okay, announcements and upcoming meetings. The City of Bellingham will host the 2016 Martin Luther King Jr. celebration on Monday, January 18th at noon in City Hall and all are welcome and we hope everyone will join us. Also, the Bellingham City Council meets all requirements of the State of Washington and the Open Meetings, Acts, Meetings Act. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now please roll. Abel Barker? Here. Dan Hamill? Here. Jean Knudsen? Here. Michael Lilliquist? Here. Roxanne Murphy? Here. Terry Borneman? Here. And Pinky Vargas is excused. Okay, we will begin our meeting today with the council standing committees and the first meeting, committee meeting that, oh, public hearing, we will go to public, public, public comment, we will get the list. Thank you. Okay, our first public comment will be from our friend Yoshi. Oh, there he is. Uh, thank you. My name is Yoshi. Uh, thank you, members of the audience and staff, uh, members of the city council, Madam Mayor. Um, this is called Freedom. I drank a lot of beer and smoked a lot of pot. I chased a lot of sex and made a lot of money. I had the big house and the fancy cars. The image looked good. People thought I was a success, but it was all a lie, and death was at my door. I opened the door and said, come on in. Death took away my beer and took away my pot. It confiscated my money and the big house and the fancy cars. Sex no longer troubled me, and neither did success. For death is quite thorough in cleaning up the mess. So thank you, Death, for teaching me to be humble and to be kind. For all that Death leaves to us is to be of loving minds. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Lisa Friend. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Mayor, Council Members, and City Staff. My name is Lisa Friend and I'm a um, homeowner in the Birchwood neighborhood and formerly a member of the Whatcom County Solid Waste Advisory Committee. I'm here to suggest that the council consider postponing the decision to close the clean green site to re let it remain open at least once a month for 2016. As a resident of the Birchwood neighborhood, I have one of those city's large lots on which I grow vegetables, uh, several trees, fruits and flowers. I've replaced much of my lawn with native plants and I have um, a number of conifer trees. I subscribed to SSC's Food Plus service. I maintain three compost bins on site, not including a worm bin. I leave my grass clippings on the lawn. I use my, my leaves for mulch in my yard, and I still use the clean green system pretty frequently, at least once or twice a month. Um, so, and I suspect I'm not alone of the number of large neighborhoods in, in Whatcom County. So I'm kind of curious about the city's future programs and plans for perhaps more tree canopy development in the city or perhaps preparation for emergencies such as last summer's drought. I um, ended up with a, a large number of pine needles and dried grass that I'm gonna be cleaning out this year that's gonna be enough to fill my trailer several times for trips to the clean green station in addition to the systems I already maintain. Also for invasive weed management, I have um, English ivy as well as blackberries and bindweed on my property and I don't, I can put those in the clean green bin but often I have more than I can fit in on the every two week schedule. So. I, I would like us to think about those types of preparedness for upcoming years and to think about opportunities for keeping that site open at least on a monthly basis. Um, 
and, and particularly uh, seeking may, maybe additional input from the Birchwood neighborhood, from the Happy Valley neighborhood, from Fairhaven and other communities that have large yards. I want to thank you for your consideration and wish you a happy new, happy new year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who is wishing to address the council? Good evening, council, mayor, and staff. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Doug Robertson, and my business address is uh, 800 McKinsey, the Bellingham Tennis Club. I'm sorry I couldn't be here today at 1, but starting a new career, I actually have to be at someplace else at 1 today. I am uh, fully in favor of turning 8th Street into a one-way. Uh, I sent some language in to amend the proposed uh, actual uh, ordinance that would be passed to make it clear that the parking restriction along 8th is only north of the McKinsey right of way. And that's an important aspect because Dave Evanall and I are working cooperatively to try and increase the amount of parking in that area as much as we can to accommodate the new development and the existing development. If all parking in the 8th Street right of way is prohibited, that will decrease the amount of parking on street parking that's available. So I'd ask that you take the ordinance that's in front of you and make sure that the language is clear that there is no parking on 8th Street, only north of McKinsey. And then one other point that Lisa just brought up, I've been out of it for a while, but I would offer up that maybe you should open up your solid waste hauling contract. Back in 1997 and 1998, when it was coming up again, I represented two different entities that would have operated Clean Green for free. I think if you were to open up now, you could probably get the highest bidder or lowest bidder to do your stormwater improvements as part of the contract and operate it for free. It's a highly competitive market. There are very effective haulers, as is SSC, but the G license doesn't mean an undisputed monopoly. I'd open up your contract and look to that as a way to provide a service that what Lisa mentioned is absolutely true. You don't want all of us driving our single load trucks out to um, RDS, you want one big truck. Let's cut the carbon footprint, I'd say, open up the contract, see if one other vendor will provide that to the city. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate your service for the council. Good night. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Good evening and Happy New Year, Council. My name is James Morford. My address is 2833 Birchwood Avenue in Bellingham. Uh, to, first of all, welcome to uh, new city, newly elected city council members and returning city council members as well. Uh, just to address one single issue, and that's the proposed curtailment of cr clean green services. Uh, I would like to uh, echo the comments already made and then add to that, I think that at this point, rather than take this abrupt action, it seems abrupt, it seems like there may be more options available and that staff could be directed to examine, uh, examine possible options um, and some suggestions have already been made tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Last call for anyone wishing to address the council. One more. Snuck in, good. Just in time. I wanted to uh, speak against closing Clean Green. Um, and the, I don't know what anybody else has said, but I would point out that uh, my neighbor currently has a brush pile and it's got rats. And I've got another neighbor and he occasionally gets some brush together and he burns it on Sunday afternoon. So if you close Clean Green, you're going to have both more Sunday afternoon fires and a lot more rats in the town. You do have lots of empty land, and I do agree that uh, the way Clink has been running is a pretty bad setup, but uh, I think you ought to be grinding up the brush and composting it here in town. So that's my thoughts in 30 seconds quick. Charlie Stores. Thank you. Okay, now we will move to our council standing committee meetings. First up is public works and public safety, and that's chaired by Terry Borneman. Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, we had one item before our committee today. It was a resolution changing the 8th 
changing 8th Street to uh, one-way northbound between McKinsey and Harris Avenue in Fairhaven. Uh, city staff is proposing a change to 8th Street that would result in a 12-foot wide drive lane one-way northbound between McKinsey and Harris Avenue and a 8-foot sidewalk abutting all within the eastern one-half of the 8th Street right-of-way. Uh, this morning, or, yeah, this afternoon, the committee did recommend approval. I so move, but I do have a question for Ted before I turn it back over to the chair, and that's in regards to uh, uh, Doug's question earlier about uh, that parking situation. And I just want to get staff's uh, comments about that. I think it's okay to, in this resolution, talk about the no parking being north of McKenzie, but I don't want to speak to what the parking situation will be elsewhere on McKenzie or 8th Street because we need to go through that process and, and there's a development and review process looking at parking with the McKenzie, looking uh, south of McKenzie. Um, this resolution was intended to address the 8th Street between McKenzie and Harris, so if we want to be specific about that, I think that's okay. But I don't want it to imply that there's decisions made on parking elsewhere. So uh, you're, can you be specific to me what it is that you're saying could be added to this that would meet his, address his, uh, well, I haven't seen Doug's language, but what I understood him to say was he wanted the resolution, it's not an ordinance, it's a res resolution yeah. that's before council tonight to be clear that the no parking on 8th Street is intended to be north of McKenzie, so between McKenzie and Harris. Okay. That, that's what I understood him to be saying. It looks like he's left, so. Hmm. Okay. Uh and that, that kind of language change would be okay with staff? That's correct. Okay. I would like to move that we add that uh, language change to our resolution. Second. Could you help me with the wording on that, Ted? So I'm, because <clears throat> I'd like to get that right. Let me try to pull it up. Yeah, I, I actually believe it already says that. What it says right now, I, th I think what Doug's asking for is already in the resolution. It says, the 8th Street right-of-way between McKenzie Avenue and Harris Avenue shall be one way northbound for all vehicular travel and parking and vehicular driveway access shall be prohibited. Specifically talking about the area north of McKenzie. Pretty well covered it. <laughs> so I, uh, the staff's recommendation would be that the language covers what Mr. Robertson is requesting. <coughs> that sounds yep. okay. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll withdraw mine and I'll withdraw yeah. and, and you so move. Yeah, I so move. Okay. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded to pass the resolution changing 8th Street to one, one way. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries five. One, five. With, Five to zero. Michael's not here. Five to zero with one absence from Pinky and one absence from Michael. One absence excused, one. One absence excused and one just absence. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, he had to recuse himself from oh, this because he, he lives in the, oh, that's oh, right. involved okay. in a dispute. That's right. One absence, one recused. <laughs> okay, end of committee. End of committee, sorry. Okay, great. 
So next we will move on to Committee of the Whole. We had five items. The first is a presentation from Attorney Breen Beggs regarding the efforts of the City of Spokane and Spokane County to update and reform their criminal justice system. And I'll turn this over to Councilmember Hamill to offer an update. Thank you, um, Councilmember Murphy. So Mr. Beggs uh, provided background on Spokane's jail proposal alternatives, diversion services, and how they're working with diverse perspectives on solutions and criminal justice reform. And the reason that Mr. Beggs was here uh, today to speak to uh, this council and also the Incarceration Reduction and Prevention Task Force this morning was because uh, last December 2nd, I traveled to Spokane to learn, about, uh, to, to learn more about their community's opportunities challenges and progress in changing and reforming their criminal justice system. And Brian was essential in ensuring that I had access to judges, prosecutors, public defenders, citizen advocates, and other stakeholders. So I felt that um, in addition to uh, me providing a report to this body and to the, to the community at large that Brian uh, could come and talk about some of the things in person. Some of the things that he covered today were um, a risk needs and responsivity tool and expanded uh, pretrial services to get people out of jail and into programs um, that would help change their lives, electronic home monitoring, um, diversion facility, um, automatic um, hearing notification, which the city now does, the uh, city of Bellingham now does, uh, a portability judge, uh, flex hours, jail courtroom, um, moving away from cash bail, um, and in insisting on um, performance measures uh, for, um, for the criminal justice system in Spokane. So largely it was an overview, of, excellent overview of where their community is at. Um, several council members had questions uh, that I feel were properly, appropriately answered by Mr. Beggs. Um, are there any other questions or comments regarding that presentation this evening? Yes. Council well, My only comment would be to any people watching tonight to go take the time to go back if you haven't. It was an interesting presentation and I think you'll get a lot from it. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, it, it was excellent, and I agree that people should watch that online if they're interested. And I also note that um, there were at least two county council members and the county executive, I think, maybe were at this morning's session with Mr. Beggs, and one county council member was in the audience this afternoon. I think the important thing here is this, is that this information is going to be distributed to the people from the county leadership who will be leading the way on many of the things that we in the city won't be doing, so we can lead our part, but I'm glad to see that there are county council members and county leaders are also aware of, of the good things done in Spokane. Thanks for bringing uh, Mr. Beggs. You're welcome. Thank you, that's the end of the report for um, item uh, 21099. Sorry, Mayor. Um, Brian did check with Casey about the check the box, if you'd like some more information about that. The ban the box. Ban the box. Check the box. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't check the Forget box. It. Don't check the box. Brian Heinrich, Mayor's Office. Uh, so I asked uh, our HR department to give me a little background on the criminal background question on uh, city applications. And I think I would start by saying. We do ask for that information. How it's handled, however, is, is, uh, is sort of a nuanced approach on that. It's not something that um, would automatically disqualify an applicant. Now, certainly there are positions within the city that require a driver's license, <coughs> excuse me, or, or, uh, or, or the nature of their um, offense might prevent them from working with um, a certain population within the city. So that's, it's more of a, a reference point um, for us. There, and even in the case that, that is flagged, um, we issue what's called a preliminary notice of adverse action, and we give the applicant five days to respond and explain the nature of their offense. Um, you know, we hire uh, dozens of people a year uh, through various positions, various processes. It's very rare that someone would dis be disqualified based on the, their criminal background. Uh, again, if you're working with a, a vulnerable population and you have an offense that is adverse to that, that's going to disqualify you. Uh, certainly within the police department as well, th th it, that's going to probably disqualify you as well if you have a, a criminal background. But um, it's not something that I, I think is probably used with regularity in terms of disqualifying an applicant. So I just wanted a little background for that. If you have any questions, be happy to try and answer those or, or get more information for the next meeting. 
Uh, no questions here. This is where I'm going to learn a little bit. I, I think that, uh, in exactly what the gentleman said today, that it's more of a precedence that um, our, if our city was interested to join a campaign to show that we're on that track as a city employer and not as an entire city quite yet. So I guess at this point, am I moving to have it put to a committee or am I asking for the city to, okay. So maybe community and economic development? Well, we do have a um, finance and personnel committee. Oh, okay. I wanted it in my. All right. So I, um, I'm moving that I, this topic go to the finance and personnel to further discuss the idea of bringing it as a city employer to adopt the uh, ban the box campaign. I'll second that. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. So the motion has been moved and seconded. Dan. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> matter. The motion is, I said Dan. The motion has been moved and seconded. <laughs> motion has been moved and seconded to add, remo the remove the box to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Ban the box from, to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries 6-0 with one absence. Okay, anything further on that? Mayor Linville. Um, one of the things that we also had today at the Alternatives Task Force was a presentation from Under Sheriff Pugler, whatever, uh, from King County, and it was about the LEAD program. And he was very clear, as was Brian, that these are programs that we would adapt to whatever our circumstances were. But I think that was also a very interesting um, presentation with alternatives that are happening in real time. A lot of what Brian was talking about hasn't been implemented yet, but King County is doing this program. So I think between the two of them, you'd have things to look at on the whole spectrum. So um, I wish I would have, um, paid more attention because he was up here today. But um, if the council's interested, I certainly could invite him to come up and make the lead presentation too. And I don't know how you feel about that, Dan. I think that this, um, this council would benefit from um, under Sheriff Pugil's presentation. So yes, I would recommend that. Councilmember Lilquist? I would, I would appreciate that invitation extended to the under sheriff as well. And for those in the audience, LEAD I think stands for Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion, is that correct? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a way uh, that they right, right there on the street, law enforcement have, can have limited capacity to create that diversion rather than push someone straight into jail if jail is really not the appropriate response in their judgment. Mm -hmm. Just in one more tool. Then I'll, I'll do that. Okay, anything further? End of your report? Uh, that's the end of my report. Okay, great. Thank you. We will move on to the difficult decision. It's a resolution of the City of Bellingham ending the Clean Green Program. So what we discussed in committee is that this is not an easy decision to make, first of all, because it's just one that is, it's a program that's not making the best financial sense for us amongst everything that we have to do in this city, most notably our waterfront environmental cleanup. And so that's why the recommendation came from staff that we would end this program, especially since it's getting more and more expensive for us to carry through. So what they have recommended and what we recommend in, in committee is that there would be two cleanups that would happen a year so you'd be able to bring your debris two times a year and that we would also offer such services if there were storms or other weather type events and it's important to note that the service providers for waste throughout our community also offer affordable services for yard waste and and tree debris and, and things of that nature so the committee this afternoon recommended ending the a resolution, ending the Clean Green Program, and I so move. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Mayor Linville. Just one bit of information. Leslie Bryson got back to us, and it's the cemetery district that owns the property. Mm -hmm. mm. Councilmember Lilliquist. Well, um, I think as we saw tonight in some of the public comments, um, 
I think we have a task before us to explain to the public what's happening in the Clean Green Program. You yourself casually use the word end, whereas it's really transitioning. Um, instead of an every weekend kind of program, it'll be an intermittent program only at certain times of the year and only kind of on an as-needed basis. So it's much less than the program that it used to be, but it's not entirely going away. So I think there'll be a challenge to explain to the public, not just in the short term, why we're feel it's necessary to make this change, or at least I feel it's necessary to make this change, but to then advertise to the public when it is open and how they can use it and how it will be provided on the current proposal actually for free to the public in the future on those kind of as-needed uh, bases. And the amount of uh, waste taken in, instead of being so much we have to ship it and pay someone to ship it to somewhere else, it actually is maybe only as much as we need for city operations for our own mulching. So, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to this transition, and I just think it's going to be important that that's explained to the public. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, mm -hmm. the resolution is Bellingham ending the Clean Green Program, yeah. but I appreciate the mm -hmm. caveat that it would be a transition to other services that would still be offered. Council Member Oh, I was just going to say, it's an end the Clean and Green. We're going to be doing something else, a few things, but the Clean and Green, no matter how you call it, is, is over, folks. We can say whatever we want about it, but we're going to pick up stuff a couple times a year and, and hopefully do some storm stuff, but we're ending that program that was clean and green. Council Member Hamlin? I just want to point out um, some of the fiscal reasoning behind um, this in my decision around this is a very difficult decision. So this program started the year I moved to Bellingham, 1989, and it's been here. It's been kind of a fixture. Um, uh, for families and households to use this um, um, facility. But I would like to point out that in, uh, dur during the past 10 years, the yearly subsidy has gone as high as $263,000 when you consider the city and the county's joint subsidies um, to, to pay for that. That's a subsidy that those are taxpayer dollars, whether you use the um, clean green or not, um, that have gone to towards operating that um, to that operation. So it, it's always operated at a loss. If it were a business, it would be out of business long ago. Um, this year, this last year, uh, the county stopped its subsidy in whole, so that means the city would have to bear the cost and the burden of um, future operations. In addition to that, um, because of uh, compliance with city and state requirements for stormwater control and water quality, there would be an estimated uh, addition of $1 million to bring the property up to, um, to standard, basically. And so it's, it's, it is because of those reasons, the financial reasons, that, that I'm going to um, uh, vote to um, end this program. Council Member Barker, please. Um, I think there's also, uh, at least it was explained to me by Eric. I can't remember his last name, sorry. Johnson. I probably should use his last name. But, <laughs> but um, that the, the, the monies that were put, and I think it started at like 7.5 million into the reserve, were put there specifically for the waterfront cleanup. And that it sounds like over time, we've just slowly been ticking away at that. And this current, if we continue this, that's where that subsidy money would be coming from. Is that correct? The subsidy does come from the solid waste fund. There's really two components to the solid waste fund. There's the ongoing operational revenue that comes from 11.5% utility tax on all solid waste operations within the city. So primarily your SSC bill um, has 11.5% utility tax on it. That goes into the solid waste fund. There's also money in the solid waste fund that has been put in reserve uh, to pay for waterfront cleanup. And you're right. Right now, we spend more than we bring in on that operational portion of the revenue. So when we do other solid waste activities, it does come out of reserve. So you are correct that it does draw down the reserve. All right. And I'm also personally a very big proponent of the city not being a competitor for the private market. And I think for all the landscape companies that we have and, and larger operations, I have a feeling this niche will be filled very quickly. And uh, for me, looking at it from a financial, financial standpoint, that would mean somebody, hopefully it's within the city limits, and I hope we find a way in permitting to um, make that process not too painful. But I think then we would be receiving a revenue from it instead of, and it may even be in a better location than right off the lakeway. So um, in the meantime, it is important to also note that um, 
the RDS, they currently compost and locally and, and, and send out locally, it sounds like, versus we were sending ours to Skagit. So yeah. I think those are all important reasons and why um, I will be supporting this. Any other council members? Okay, seeing none, the motion is to support the resolution to end the Clean Green Program. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries unanimously. Pinky Vargas is excused. Next, we have a mayor's request to the governor to declare a state of emergency on homelessness. This was a really healthy discussion this afternoon and the mayor brought us um, some outreach that she would like to do to our governor to ask for additional assistance in ways that the state can help us in terms of improving homelessness, especially relating to funding that we could use here locally to really address this issue. And we determined that it definitely is a state of emergency for our community and so many others for various reasons, including the fact that we have children that are homeless and we need to do everything we can to support that. So the council voted unanimously to endorse the request to the governor to declare a state of emergency on homelessness, and I so move. Second. The motion and the second. Is there any other discussion? Councilmember Hamlin. I just wanted to point out that the, and I'm sorry if I misheard this, that the council, it would be a joint council uh, mayor uh, letter to the governor. Mm -hmm. I said endorse. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The letter. Sure. Is that good enough for you guys? Yep. Okay. Councilmember Lilquist. Well, I'm going to repeat some of my comments. So, sorry Please. for the council, but for the public. Um, the, one of the purposes behind this letter really is to uh, encourage state officials to activate some statewide programs to address homelessness. This is not about a crisis, particularly here in Bellingham, where we've actually have substantial number of programs, but it's really about addressing the broadest uh, issue statewide. And that's, that's the, I think, a lot of why the, the mayor was reaching out to the governors to help activate those programs and why I'm, I'm happy we're going to support that. Councilman, and I'm going to repeat mine because I kind of disagree a little bit with Michael because we have a lot of programs, but we still have major problems here with with housing. If you look look at how uh, what what our average income is compared to the cost of housing, how few available units are, and how how big our homeless population is, we're doing a lot of things but we still have a major problem and we're running out of tools and this is asking for more tools to help us address this as well as on, on a statewide level. But no we, we have you know, major problems. I, I just don't want to downplay the idea that, oh, in Bellingham, we're good and the rest of the, we're not. We have major, major homelessness problems here and housing problems here and, and we're trying very hard to address them. Oh, I but, agree, we, Terry. but we still have a problem. I yeah. agree. Councilmember Barker. So I'd also like to just echo the comments from from earlier. There were some concerns about us. Um, I'll use the word endorse as well. Uh, the ability of adding a new tax, but I think we confirmed that um, if the city were to, I guess, push that forward, that it 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 could be a voter. Um, it have to be voter approved. So for me, knowing that we're saying, please make this easier for everybody, not just Bellingham. It's not us committing to say, we're just gonna automatically throw this tax in because um, being uh, um, it's a one income for quite a while with a, a teacher is bringing that income and a lack of a, a cost of living increase and taxes for city going up, I completely understand how that pay keeps going down. So. Um, I think to remember that, that this is simply just saying let's make this easier for all of us and not specific that that's something that we're going to do right off the bat. So, Great, thank you. Anything else? Okay, the motion is to endorse the mayor's request to Governor Jay Inslee to declare a state of emergency on homelessness. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The motion carries 6-0 with Pinky Vargas absent, sorry. Excused absence. Okay, next, we have approval of meeting minutes. I have one set of council meeting minutes from the 4th. Move approval. Second. 
Motion has been made and seconded to approve the council meeting minutes of January 4th. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 This was the same sign. Motion carries unanimously with Pinky Vargas excused. Okay, older new business. I'm going to let you guys take these individually. Um, so something I didn't bring up during the public works regarding 8th Street, um, I attended the meeting for Fairhaven and really appreciated staff taking the time to sit down and go through like where did the communication break down because coming from a neighborhood perspective, I know sometimes that communication breaks down and when it does, people start to distrust the system and I think if we can keep that communication open, we can avoid the 11th hour panic. Um, and, and because staff was willing to sit down and wasn't defensive, which I really appreciated and we kind of go through it, what I did notice is there may be some, um, myth, I guess some confusion for city staff. And um, I know for the, like for the Birchwood neighborhood, for instance, our bylaws state that the president is the only one that gets to speak for the neighborhood. So when the city, we might have somebody that gets excited about a pet project and goes out and works a lot on it and then staff might start to understand well that person's communicating back to the neighborhood and and they have they have no onus to do that so i think it would be great um somehow i guess for you maybe to you could even at mnac see if everybody's bylaws are about the same whether they call it a president or a chair and then uh, get that information to the directors and then hopefully start that so that even though you're talking to all the people that have been interested, something also is going out to that, that president so we keep that loop open. Okay, great. And we did have one motion and I will further that. And the motion was to add pharmaceutical disposal to the Public Works and Public Safety Committee and I so move. Second. Okay, and the motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously with Pinky Vargas excused. Any other updates? Seeing none. And that is end of committee. Mayor's report, please. So I've talked a lot today, so I don't have a lot else to report. Um, I have one approval, which is Brett Bopan to the Transportation Commission. Approval. Motion has been made and seconded to appoint Brent Bopan to the Transportation Commission. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Councilmember Vargas, excused. And I have, um, <coughs> excuse me, I have four appointments for your information. Sarah Holliday to the Tourism Commission, Rhiannon Bardsley to the Community Development Advisory Board. Uh, reappointment of Zaccarelli Frescobaldi Grimaldi to hey, this. Hey, good job. <laughs> That's better than you did last year. Thank you, Jean. That's very good. To the Citizens Transportation Advisory Group and Carlos Swellwagon to the Sea Home Arboretum Board of Directors. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. I'm going to see if Councilmember Knutson will be there for me the same way I've been there for him. Consent agenda. Move approval. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Councilmember Vargas excused. Final consideration of ordinances. Agenda Bill 21085, an ordinance accepting the donation of real property and improvements known as the Stonecrest Stormwater Facility. Move third final. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, roll we'll call, please. Dan Hamill? Aye. Jean Knudsen? Aye. Michael Lilliquist? Aye. Roxanne Murphy? Aye. April Barker? Aye. Terry Borneman? Aye. Pinky Vargas excused. Uh, ordinance passes 6-0. Agenda Bill 21088, an ordinance vacating a portion of the Samish Way 37th Alley south of Consolidation Avenue abutting 105 Samish Way. Move third and final. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Gene Knudsen? Yes. Michael Lilliquist? Aye. Roxanne Murphy? 
April Barker? Aye. Terry Borneman? Aye. Dan Hamill? Aye. Pinky Vargas excused. Ordinance passes 6 0. Agenda Bill 21090, an ordinance adopting an exemption from admission tax for qualifying live music venues, amending Bellingham Municipal Code Chapter 4.74.030. Move third and final. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. April Barker? Aye. Terry Borneman? Aye. Dan Hamill? Aye. Jean Knudsen? Aye. Michael Illiquist? No. Roxanne Murphy? Aye. No. Pinky Vargas excused. Motion or ordinance passes 5 1. Michael Illiquist excused. Opposed. Or, or opposed. opposed. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this ends our city council meeting. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great night, everybody.